Welcome back. So today we're going to change oil in the Honda 250. This is a 2015 model. It's a Honda Twister CBX 250. I imagine it's pretty similar to a lot of the other Hondas uh, like it. So we have here our oil uh, diagram for the, the filter. We've got a filter, some metric wrenches, a flashlight, a drain pan, and we have some paper towels as well, so uh, let's get started. I believe the oil filter is right in here according to this, so let's get started pulling it out. Okay, so it looks like a 12 millimeter wrench fits the drain plug. It's right here, so we'll go ahead and get that out. There we go. Sure the drain pan's under it and pull it out. Sorry for the poor lighting here. Hopefully you guys can see what we're doing. There we go, out it comes. At a glance, this does not appear to be a magnetic drain plug, so. I didn't see a ceiling washer. We'll have to look up there and once the oil's drained and see what we have. Okay, so there actually is a crush washer, aluminum, on the drain plug. So it just looked like it was the shoulder of the the bolt or the plug. And it appears that the drain plug, the location of the drain plug on this motorcycle was designed on the left side to drain while it's sitting on the kickstand, so that's perfect. So the oil's still draining out a little bit, probably take a few more minutes, uh, but we, we can, most of it's out, so we can go ahead and get started on the filter. Uh, we'll also pull the uh, dipstick out, have a look at that, and we'll, we'll test the drain plug to see if it's magnetic. Okay, so it looks like an 8 millimeter wrench fits these bolts very nicely. So let's go ahead and pull them out. Okay, so those are the bolts out. And as soon as I pulled the bolts out, I, I removed them, I started wiggling the cap a little bit and it kind of popped out slightly. So there's a spring pressure as you can see there that holds it, that, that pops it out. So let's go ahead and and remove this carefully. Oh, there it comes. I guess you should be careful it doesn't fall in and get dirty inside the drain pan. And there we go. Looks just, you know, kind of a brownish, oil-colored looking filter. We don't really see any particulate in there at all, but, yep definitely uh, will be good to change it just uh, I'm sure there's still good flow there looks like there's a spring in the very back and very really not much oil accumulated in there so we'll go ahead and set this aside and let's check and make sure that okay it looks like that springs not really going anywhere so we'll leave that alone uh, we will get in a rag and very carefully without trying to not to introduce any contaminants. We'll try, uh, this is a clean shop towel. We'll try to uh, soak up a bit of that oil there just so we can make sure that we don't have any any particulates inside the this chamber here. Yeah, and it looks like we're pretty good. I don't don't see anything in there, so okay, great. We'll give the edge a little this bevel a little wipe right around the edge to ensure that the o-ring goes back in and seals properly once we put it back together. Make sure there's no dirt to get into the o-ring. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull. Looks like this just uh, pulls off just like that. And there it is. There's the filter. It just kind of popped off of there. There's a rubber ring that seals it. Okay, so we'll also clean the edge of this to make sure that there's no dirt on this part. 
check the condition of this o-ring. We did not get a new one with the filter, so we'll just make sure that this o-ring is still looks like it's in good condition. As far as uh, you know, any broken spots or being flat. I'm not really expecting anything like that. This is the first oil change for this bike, but just in case. And I notice there is a, a oil gallery on here, so we'll want to make sure we know which way this goes. Hmm. Not so sure now. Let's look at the diagram. Ah, oh, yes, it looks like it goes up. So it goes just like that. And yep, sure enough, there is a corresponding passage there. So we want to make sure that is in the correct orientation. So that would probably not be good if we got that mixed up. So let's go ahead and put the new filter, press it on. Looks like there's not really much that holds it there. So the other one being barely stuck there was probably just, uh, you know, the surface stuck. So we'll go ahead and, and put this back, making sure to keep that passage oriented properly. And we'll slide it in. Just by hand, we'll make sure that it that it fits all the way. Okay, which it does. So, time to get a bolt and put in there. Tighten it. First by hand, then we'll get a wrench on it and we'll we'll slowly tighten them both evenly. Okay, so tighten these. Trying to make sure we go pretty much even there as it goes in. We don't want it getting sideways. So now we felt we felt like the, the bolts are, are home and we're gonna give them a bit of a snug. When you tighten bolts like this, you want to put enough pressure on it so that you're positive that even with vibration it's not going to back out, but not so much pressure that you break the bolt or stretch it. So there we go. We'll Run a rag over this, just to make sure there's there's no contamination. So that if we uh, or oil spots there, so when we check it for leaks, we'll we'll know it was absolutely clean before. Okay, so time to put the drain plug back in, and we'll put some oil in it. Okay, so we're. Putting the drain plug back in now. Put it in finger tight first. We'll put a wrench on it later. And same with this. We want to tighten it up enough that we're sure it's not going to back out with vibration. We definitely don't want to break it. It's actually pretty hard to break these. Um, the danger can be that they tend to tighten up over time. Uh, I'm not sure exactly for what reasons, but drain plugs, unless they're completely loose, you know, don't tend to get any looser. <laughs> they tend to get tighter and sometimes can be very difficult to take out later. So definitely don't want to over tighten the drain plug. But there's no reason to tighten it to an extreme amount. So. Now that that's done, we'll get ready to put some oil in it. So before you remove a drain plug or a dipstick or anything like this, it's usually a good idea if there's dirt around the area, go ahead and clean up as much of that dirt as you can before you pull it out. That prevents it from falling inside. So now that that's done, we'll, we'll pull this out. It'll take a little persuading, oh, not too bad. And it could have left a little more room for this, but it's fine. We'll go ahead and pull that out. And yep, looks like there's an O-ring there. And 
the dipstick looks fine. There was a tiny bit of oil on it because the bike was leaned to the left, so we don't expect it to have a meaningful reading at this point. Uh, but we'll we'll wipe it off and clean it real well, clean the dirt off the O-ring, and see about a way to put the oil into the motor. Okay, so we've cleaned this area up now that the dipstick is an oil plugger removed with a paper towel very carefully so we didn't get pieces in there. We've also cleaned the dipstick thoroughly and put the o-ring back in its place. And we've made this paper funnel. Just used a piece of tape, rolled it to a point, and then trimmed it off to the appropriate size. And so rather than going out and buying a special funnel or trying to drip it in, we're just going to use this. And as you can see, that fits in there very nicely. So that's a nice trick. Uh, it's only usable once, but that's perfect for us. So we believe this bike takes uh, just over a quart of oil. So we're going to put, you know, maybe half or two thirds or three quarters in and, and then start checking the oil level. So here goes. Now we'll want to pour the oil pretty slowly so we don't, you know, fill up any of the galleries or have it backflow or make a mess coming out. Checking to make sure that we're not spilling any. It's going in nicely. So we'll just keep a, a steady pace. Keep it going in. And at some point we'll stop and check the level. And yeah, the the new oil should, should have some color to it, but shouldn't be uh, very dark at all. It's probably best to use a good brand named oil. It's not, you know, you definitely don't want to use uh, reclaimed oils or things like that in your vehicle. So, so we poured most of it in there, roughly uh, three quarters of it, and we'll check it, see uh, what our level is like. So we'll go ahead and pull this out carefully, set it here on the rag, and use our dipstick to check the oil level. Now we just put the dipstick down until it contacts. We're not going to screw it in. We'll pull it back out. And we don't really see anything on it yet, so I think it's safe. Even with the bike tilted a bit sideways, we're going to go ahead and uh, pour a bit more in. So we'll go ahead and put the funnel back in. Yeah, there's not a lot left here, so probably just go ahead and pour it in. The service guy said it took more than a quart so I think it's pretty safe to pour this in. Okay. Some engines you want to let sit a little bit. You want to let the, the oil settle through the galleries and then fill up, but I'm pretty sure this is going directly into the soap. So, we'll go ahead and check this. We'll make sure we don't have any oil on the dipstick. We'll put it in. And then pull it out again. And still don't have anything, so... We'll get the flashlight. And we'll look in there and see if we can see. And yeah, there's definitely oil in there, so... We are... We are filling it. Uh, the only question is how much. So probably what we'll do at this point uh, is turn the camera off for a moment. I'll actually get on the bike so I can I can tilt it upright completely, and I'll I'll check it then and see where we're at. And we'll probably end up adding a bit more oil. Okay, so with the bike upright, we actually are getting a reading on the dipstick now, right about here. And so the the first mark here is the minimum mark. The top mark would be the full mark. So it looks like we still have a ways to go. So we'll go ahead and pour just a little bit of, of the second quart in there and we'll recheck and see what happens. It does appear that it, that it likes to be uh, checked with the bike upright. And there's, 
this bike doesn't have a kickstand that allows it to be upright, so we'll kind of have to get on the bike every time and level it out and and dip it. But that seems to be working. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so we poured just a little bit more oil in from the second container, a little bit of it, and we've got up to about here now, so we're about three quarters of the way between the low mark and the full mark. So we're gonna go ahead and add just a touch more. We'll check it again, verify that it's correct, and then we should be able to uh, go to our final checklist before we start the bike. Okay, so we're finally up to the full mark here on the dipstick. So we're gonna go ahead and, and put the dipstick back in. When we're putting it back in, we we're, we're going to be very careful that we don't cross thread it. It's very important that these plastic dipsticks get screwed in properly. I've seen so many of them messed up in other vehicles in the past, so we're gonna, we're gonna be very careful, make sure it looks like it's lined up from the side when it's going in, and make sure it goes in easily. And, and we'll make sure it's secure too, although, you know, like spin on oil filters or oil drain plugs, these do tend to get tighter with time, so we're not gonna tight it, tighten it unduly, we're just going to snug it up to make sure it won't come out uh, during operation and that should be good enough. Okay, so before we call that oil level good or great, we're going to actually start the bike up, let it run for 30-40 seconds, maybe a minute, shut it down and then recheck the oil level and we'll see where it's at by then. Okay, so before we start the bike we're going to go through a little bit of a checklist and I found I've caught myself a lot of times doing oil changes on industrial equipment uh, having forgot one of these things. So I like to look at the engine kind of like a vessel uh, with, with fluid in it and just think of it at that real basic level so and kind of think back through what we did. That, that kind of helps. So we pulled the, we pulled the drain plug out. We drained the oil, so the, the old oil is gone. Then we, we replaced the drain plug. We tightened it, I remember tightening it, so that's we can check that off. Uh, we also replaced the filter. We pulled out the old filter, put the new filter back in, got the, the, the cap on in the proper orientation. That's important. Uh, we have the old filter here, so we'll, I like to look around and make sure I don't have any leftover parts. We have the bag for the old filter, the new filter's not here, so we definitely did not forget to put it in. And this is empty, that's ha almost half empty, so uh, we, we have fluid in it and we've replaced the dipstick. So there, there's oil in it right now, it's not going to fall out, it's not going to come out here, it's not, probably, hopefully not going to come out there and the the drain plug is in so okay there there's oil in the bike there's no extra pieces laying around so that's just the quick kind of mental check that i go through before i actually start an engine so it's just a, a little habit that i've had but it, it prevents uh, yourself from making mistakes so we'll go ahead and start it up for a moment let it run for 30 seconds to a minute shut it off and recheck the oil Neutral, kill switch off, ignition on, choke on, more or less. Not enough choke, I think. It's always better to have less choke than too much. Better for the engine to die than to be flooded or run too rich. Back down to idle. Okay. 
so it sounds good. And it's run for a while, so that oil should be circulated. And we'll uh, shut it off and check the oil again. Okay, so not too surprisingly, the oil level went down quite a bit. Not sure if you can see, but the oil is exactly at the low mark now. So, you know, it did fill up probably the the oil filter cavity and some of the other passageways that may have drained when we drained the oil. So there's a lot of things inside the engine that can account for this, and it really depends a lot of, on the accessories as, to, as well. So... Uh, that are that are part of the motor and the internals. So we're going to go ahead and put a little bit more oil in this before we call it good. That's why we check. Okay, so we finally got it topped off. As you can see, perhaps it's exactly at the full mark. So we're quite happy with that result. We'll make sure we put the dipstick in and tighten it before we start it uh, again, and then it should be ready to go. So we've actually used right about 1.7, roughly 1.7 quarts of oil. So a quart isn't quite a liter. I'm not sure if the guy was thinking in liters, but kind of makes you wonder if the service people are changing the oil filter or anyway, they might have the bike level or, you know, they're, the different bikes have different accessories, different years. There can be some changes. So. That's why we like to be so meticulous about checking the oil at many stages here, so we make sure we get the right amount in. You know, if it were probably a little over, it's probably not going to be the end of the world. There are some engines that are sensitive to overfilling, like at all, um, and most engines will allow you to not have quite enough oil in, um, you know, down to the the... Low mark is still okay, obviously, but, you know, you never know if you're going up a steep hill or where the pickup is uh, for the oil is, you know, you just don't want to lose oil pressure. So as long as you have oil pressure, everything's good. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with, with this engine, so, or these type of engines. I mostly worked as a diesel mechanic, so I really don't know how the lubricating system in these works, but I'm imagining it's a pressure system. But um, I really don't like having anywhere near <laughs> low uh, oil in an engine. It's just, you know, for the amount of work it takes to get it right, it's really not worth having it wrong. So, and as we go for the first ride in the bike, we'll, we'll go just a short ways and stop and, and get off and really check thoroughly for leaks. And Probably when we get back after the first ride, we'll we'll check the oil again, make sure it's still at the at the same level. But uh, I think we're pretty much done here. So thanks and have a good day and uh, welcome to the channel if this is your first time or second time. Uh, this is only our second video on this channel, so you can check out our other channels. I'll put a link in the description below. You can see what other things we're doing. This channel is just meant to kind of introduce people to different things, what it's like to do change oil on a motorcycle, to ride it. And we, you know, I actually live a, what most people consider a, a varied and interesting life uh, here in Mexico. So we'll be doing a lot of kind of interesting things. Uh, just kind of happens. So. Stay tuned, and we'll. Thanks for subscribing if you've done so. We appreciate that, and we'll see you in the future. Bye.